So you don't have to use RAS very long to realize that uh, we produce a lot of files. Um, one of the tools I really like is this little button right here. If you ever want to kind of go see where what the files are that are associated with that project, this folder will open the project file. And you can see that I've generated a lot of files here. I've got like 11 plans. And each one of those plans has a number of files. And you know, sometime I'll do a video on what each of these little file extensions mean. But the truth is you don't actually need to know most of it. A lot of these are scratch files. We're gonna clean all this up with 7.0. It's about you know 30 years of accumulated files here. Um, but uh, the one time it becomes important is when you wanna share or archive these. Um, and so this is a project that I'm working on right now. And you can see that I've, you know, I'm going through a series of different like calibration runs and different trials. And so um, we've got a bunch of different results here. Um, incidentally, one of the things that the mapper guys have done in version 6.3 is they've cleaned up the geometry uh, tree here. So now the geometry only shows the layers that you actually have active, which cleans up map the mapper tree quite a bit. Um, but under results, you can see that it's not clean. I have lots of things, lots of tests, lots of things that are no longer salient. Um, and if I just want to give someone the current plan, um, going in here and picking out the files, it has a very low success rate. Generally, when people try to send me just the files that I need, um, it goes very poorly. And then these are actually pretty small output files. The output files can be gigs, and so it just it's just you know really laborious to um, to try to get those two people over online. And so we have these archiving tools. Um, these archiving tools have been in RAS for a while. Uh, it, it, the, it's the artist formerly known as the debug report, but Cam Ackerman and Mark Jensen and Anton, they recently um, put a lot of work into these actually for FEMA and um, made these into archiving tools. So the main idea here is that if you wanna archive um, certain plans, uh, it's just a lot more robust, but it also becomes a lot more robust to share files. And so if you go to file, and now it's called zip plans or archive project. And you open this, you'll see that if you've been in the debug report before, it was a very simple editor. This is a much more complex editor. And what this does is it says, hey, I'm gonna just take the current plan um, and I'm gonna grab the train data and the classification data because you need those to pass that back and forth. But let's say you're just looking for something that you wanna email back and forth and you both have the train data. Well, you can turn that off and that will make the, the package a lot smaller. In this case, I'm gonna keep it on. And then you can opt in to the output, but the output's usually big. And so usually we opt out of the output and just pass the input data is back and forth, and then you can run them on your own machine and create the big output file. So we're gonna leave out the output. Um, and it used to just be that you could only do this with the current plan, but now you can go in and you can select multiple plans. And so for this one, I don't actually want the current plan. I want um, this one, this uh, HS uh, Weir with three grain classes. That's what I want, but I could get more than one if I wanted to. And then I'm, I do want the train data. I do want the classification data, which is the N value in this case. It's also the you know, sediment gradation polygons. And then I'm just gonna say, create a zip file. And Raz is going to go and take only the files that I need to reproduce this run and turn them into a zip file. So now I'm gonna go back and push my favorite button here to, uh, to open the project. And you'll see up top here, we have a zip file that's just plan eight. And if you open that up, it's all of the files that you need just to run that plan eight. And so that's a lot smaller. You can pass it back and forth. If you're passing files back and forth a lot, you can have the train data on both machines and then you can pass, you know, it turns it into a package that's small enough to send over email. Now, there's one kind of downside of that is that when you bring this in to RAS Mapper, it's a little bit of a mess. Um, but the guys also added tools to deal with this. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, I'll create a new folder and uh, this will be uh, import. And I'll just open, I'll just paste the uh, those files there and unzip them. And so then 
I'm going to go in and just open that file. Okay, and so I open that file, and what's telling me is, hey, this is this project um, used to have all of these files, and it doesn't have those anymore. And your response is, good, I don't want those. And those and all of the extraneous S and Z and X files that go with them, no thank you. That just adds a lot of clutter. I've gotten down to the project I actually want to archive or send to a collaborator. And so I'll say, okay. And because it wasn't the current plan at the time, you may have to go in and actually open the plan. And there you go. Now it has only the plan, the geometry, the flow, and the sediment file that I wanted at the time, and now I can rerun it and get a result. And so I'll, I'll do that. Um, but when I do that, I go into Mapper, and now Mapper's a little bit of a mess because all of these geometries and all of these results that were associated with you know plans or runs that used to be in this project aren't in this project anymore and so mappers just got all these little red dots that says hey this is a problem hey this is a problem hey this is also a problem and that's just a mess and so you can go in and you can you know remove these one by one, uh, but that's a pain. And so Cam and Anton added this tool. If you go to tools, remove missing layers, got a little broom there, it'll just sweep that all up and say, okay. And it'll get rid of everything except the geometry you have. And then when you run the result, that result will show up as well. And so those are, those are incredibly valuable tools. If you're ever sending, if you ever find a bug and send a, a bug report to HEC. This is actually what we'll ask you to do. We'll ask you to, you know, use the debug file or the archive slash zip tool now, as it's, as it's called for FEMA, um, to create the smallest um, runnable package. And that's really what this does. It creates the smallest runnable package that you can either archive or give to a friend. Uh, my name is Stanford Gibson. I'm the sediment transport specialist at HEC. And these little videos are funded by the HHNC SET program.